Welcome back and thank you for joining us today on the show. What if each day you, you woke up to go to work, but instead of it being a desk, it's a dining table. One Bay Area foodie does just that. Joining us now is Ali Tong of Ali Eats. Thank you so much, Ali, for joining us on Live in the Bay. So Thanks excited. for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's amazing to have you here, a person who is very, a lot of expertise in the <laughs> food area. So I love food. I'm really glad to have you on the show. <laughs> I'm glad you do. The best kinds of people are the ones that love to eat. <laughs> right? So I, I, I want to know, how did you first get started into food blogging? Because now, I mean, look at you. you you've blown up. Uh, it was, I kind of just fell into it. It started as a hobby, actually. I was finishing up college at the end of 2015 at the University of Miami. And you know, I was so into food Instagrams during that time. Like while I was in classes, I was just scrolling food Instagrams, not really listening. Hopefully my parents aren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> but I would sit in class and just like find new restaurants I wanted to check out, bookmark them. And then like every weekend I would tell my friends, okay, this is the restaurant we're going to to try this weekend. And all throughout high school and like college, ever since I had um, a phone that could take photos, I always was taking snappy photos of my food anytime I dined out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have anywhere to put these photos though. So my friends were like, why don't you start a food Instagram? They're becoming so popular. Like you're always trying out the newest spots. Like you should just do it for fun. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. Like doesn't hurt. This way I have somewhere to store my photos at least that I can look back at later. So started doing that. And then when I moved back to the Bay, that's when it's really started taking off more. I was getting invited to back then media preview events. And we there can was, see it now, actually. Your yeah. Oh, this is my Instagram. Yes. You can <laughs> see a lot of my content on there. So it kind of just like spiraled and became a bigger thing because food or influencers started growing into this actual like, um, became like a job. Yeah. This, this whole transitioned thing. from my hobby mm -hmm. into my job, which I never would have expected. It was just a really natural progression. And I'm just so fortunate that I get to do what I love for a living. And like every day I get to eat great food. And that's just something that's always been a huge part of my life. I've just always, you know, loved eating. I've watched Food Network ever since I was a little kid making food. And like, you know, this is just exciting It's so job. exciting. It's very <laughs> exciting because it, just by listening to you right there, I could tell you're very passionate about food. So yes. anytime someone is able to do their passion as their job, that's an incredible blessing. So yes. amazing for you. Now, when did you first see when you decided, okay, I'm going to do this thing for real. I'm going to start posting on Instagram, social media, all of my food adventures. When did you start seeing the pickup people really starting to come to your page and ask for recommendations? It was, so I started my Instagram back before the algorithm changed, back when it was chronological. So back then it was a lot easier to get exposure. Anyone who's on Instagram these days knows that like, with this new algorithm that they have, it's harder to get exposure and to you have to go viral basically. Mm -hmm. So back then I was picking up traction because anytime I get reposted by a larger page, people would follow and like, I guess there also weren't as many, there were a lot of food Instagrams back then, but just not as many as there are today. So it was a little bit easier to <laughs> reach more people. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and what did you, what kind of feeling did you get when you were like, wow, people are really tuning in to what I have to say? I mean, I, I know I'm described as an influencer, but that's not really how I like see myself because I didn't mm -hmm. set out to influence people. I was just sharing what I love and what I love to do and just like wanted to like get the word out about restaurants I was eating. I mean, technically my page wasn't started to even share with other people. I was just like, I'll just post it. Just like, so I have a diary for myself and it's just, you know, kind of changed along the way. Yeah. Okay. So first came Instagram. Then came TikTok. Tell me about the difference in the <laughs> following between those two social medias. It's very different. So I started my TikTok along with everybody else when the <laughs> pandemic started, right? So that was um, a learning curve because I wasn't really making videos before that or like editing, making edited videos. I was kind of just doing quick clips for my Instagram stories. But when TikTok came along, I was like, now I have to learn how to film and produce and like edit full on videos. So <laughs> like a whole change. Yes, it was very different. But thankfully in the pandemic, I had the time because everything slowed down a bit. So yes. that was my goal. I actually set one, um, some goals for myself when the pandemic first started. I was like, I'm gonna make a TikTok. And one of my goals was to go viral on TikTok. 
And then another goal was to get a brand partnership on TikTok. So I was able to accomplish both. Congratulations. Which was really exciting. That's Thank very you. Exciting. <laughs> and um, it kind of just grew from there. TikTok is very different than Instagram. Mm -hmm. It is, they have a different algorithm. So a lot of people are able to get their um, posts seen. Whereas Instagram, it is a little harder. You kind of need a big following to begin with. Whereas TikTok, you can start from zero and all of a sudden, I've seen many people explode to get like 20,000 followers, 100,000 of followers. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden overnight, you don't have to be an influencer either. It's like you just post really casual, any quick clips. It doesn't have to be so perfect like Instagram. Instagram is known for having that like perfect aesthetic. Whereas yeah. TikTok can be really casual and people don't want to see that perfect aesthetic. Well. I know you said that you didn't set out to be an influencer or to influence people, but now that you're in the position you are, what does it mean to you to know that the work you post is actually inspiring others? It's really, I'm just so grateful that this is what I get to do. I'm really grateful that people trust me and my opinions and they look out mm -hmm. to me for recommendations. I'm just, I still can't believe it sometimes. I'm like, this is my <laughs> I can life. See the joy on your face. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well, it's given you other opportunities. You've actually been able to open a social media agency. Can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, so I started Hockey Stick Media with my business partner, Sin, who's actually also another food influencer. And together we have a social media management and content creation agency. So we have a few clients around the Bay Area as well as a new client that is a celebrity client opening, launching a new restaurant concept tomorrow. Ooh. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll find out who that celebrity is tomorrow morning when we launch. But this is all just really exciting stuff. We manage um, social media pages. We create the content, including photos and videos for all of our clients. So we have restaurants, a salon in the city, probably some brands and restaurants that everyone knows. Any hints? I know you said you can't oh, yeah. say, but any hints? The one tomorrow that's launching tomorrow, I cannot, but we do have <laughs> Yank Singh, Lamar, Haranita, Blake Charles Salon, Jordan Winery. Those are just a few of our clients in the Bay Area that you can go visit. But um, the one tomorrow, you will find out tomorrow. On your Instagram, right? On everyone my can Instagram, go. you'll see who it is in my stories. Okay, wonderful. So everyone, make sure you tune in, go check out her Instagram tomorrow. Yes. Okay, before you go, I have to ask, since you know, you know all the wonderful spots around the Bay Area, do you have any suggestions for someone who's new to the Bay Area on some good spots to eat? Oh, I've got plenty. It's, <laughs> whenever people ask me what your favorite restaurant is, I'm like, it's so hard because that's yeah. like asking someone who their favorite child is. And like, <laughs> how can you I like that. favorites, I like that right? It's so hard. I got a long list. Obviously, all my clients I love. That's why I work with them. But some other great restaurants that is very picturesque is Sun and Garden. Mm -hmm. If you go there, it's like an Alice in Wonderland fairy tale theme, which is so fun. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so that's always fun for photos, for Instagram and content, you know, and the food is just so creative. So it's... Okay. I got some more if you want some more. No, no, that's a good one. <laughs> when, we, when we walk off set, I'm going to make a list. I'll, I'll like give that you one. a whole list. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Allie, for joining us on Live in the Bay. I appreciate your time and all of your suggestions. And if you want to know more on Allie Eats, all you have to do is follow her food adventures. And we have a link for you on our website in liveinthebay.tv.